I got myself a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe 3 and I'm going to modify it. Hey guys, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. My friend gave me his amplifier because he wants me to modify it. It's very loud, he says. He puts it on, he cranks it up to two on the volume, and it's blaring loud. Like, he just, he, he doesn't go past two. So what he wants me to do is to see if I can maybe curve that down a bit. I took a quick look at the service manuals because Fender is great. I found service manuals online. So I have the schematic for this Fender amp, okay? And also the board layout. So I mean, I know, I already know what's inside this amplifier without even opening it up. I have it over here. I wanna take a look at it. This is really nice, guys. It took very little effort for me to find this service manual online. So last episode, where I was troubleshooting the Line 6 Spider 2 amplifier and whatever, we're all disappointed that I couldn't do it. Partially, some of the reason why it was harder is because I didn't have a schematic to follow. Troubleshooting is so much easier when you have a schematic and a block diagram to follow, okay? And thankfully enough, most of these Fender amplifiers and electronic products, you could find these online, okay? People are posting these left, right, and center. It was so easy to find this, okay? This is the main schematic of the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe or the Fender Hot Rod DeVille. And this is way too small to actually read it. I think this is meant to be printed, yeah, printed on a D size drawing and this is eight and a half by 11. So uh, let's just take a look at some other pages. There's the power supply circuit, okay. Um, obviously they didn't have any space on the other page. So this is where they're putting all the power supply. It's coming in, what's happening to it, which coils and which uh, tubes it's going to. I'm no audio guru, like I always say, but this is, this is like you could follow this. You could tell, you know, which filaments are being heated and where from which rails, where's the negative rails and shit like that, where's the high voltage rails. This is the board layout, okay? We are going to see this inside the hot rod and our resistor that we're gonna be changing is somewhere near the front end, okay? Because the volume knob you'll see is near the front. We might come back to the schematic, we might not. But the service diagram is out there for your reference. So if you wanna follow along and take a closer look, this is available online, just search it up. Fender Hot Rod Deluxe 3 service diagram or service manual. Yeah, this last diagram is for the foot switch. I don't know much about amplifiers or, or buying high quality amplifiers, but I know that the power cord and the foot switch fit inside the amplifier. I took it out. It's this big hunk of solid metal that you could tap it with your foot and stuff like that. And I guess it, it, uh, it changes like channel select and gain select. I don't know. Now back on the main schematic, the part I'm actually looking at is the front end right at the input, which is this section here. Okay. There she is. Like I said, my friend wants his volume turned down so that it, there's less emphasis, right? He could, he wants to be able to change the, the knob higher and get more control on the volume. And we could see right here, right off the bat, this is the potentiometer for the volume, okay? It's a 250K pot and uh, there's another potentiometer in series and a capacitor. I did not analyze this circuit like crazy, but what I can tell is I think I could change this R9 resistor to a larger value. Right now it's a that's a 270k resistor. And I want to double this value. I think I want to put in a 560k, okay? And what that's going to do is that's basically going to pass less current or or this voltage here. I'm not sure what the the downstream electronics depend on whether it's current or voltage but either way if I throw in a, a different resistor in here it's going to change the voltage divider okay there's going to be more voltage drop across this resistor and this top part of the pot and the bottom part will have less emphasis so there will be a smaller voltage swing a smaller current or voltage coming out and going on to the next amplifier section this capacitor here I'm a little worried about because this might actually be some kind of filter capacitor that is for the frequency response of the front end. If this was a bypass cap, then it'd be no problem, but it's a pretty low value. That This is 0.022 microfarads, that's 22 nano, and it might actually be interacting with this, this potentiometer circuit here to actually be 
some kind of filter. Okay, like I said, frequency response. Bypass cap would mean that whatever kind of AC voltage is coming out of our tube would just get passed to the next section without any of the DC coming through. Or sorry, I don't mean bypass cap, I mean a coupling capacitor. This could be capacitive coupling, and, and what that is, is basically just block out the DC and let the AC pass to the next amplifier section. When you're using transistors and MOSFETs, or, or tubes even, to be used as amplifiers, you need these coupling capacitors to really block out any DC voltage, okay, because the these components must be biased externally right with all these resistors and capacitors for frequency response and once it's biased there's a constant DC interaction with the amplifier circuit and you don't want this DC going on to the next stage and ruining the bias there or even worse getting into whatever kind of amplification you have so that's why we use coupling caps let's go ahead and take a look at the amplifier, let's pop it open, find this R9 cap, and replace it. And if it still sounds good, well then I guess it's a, it's a good swap. If not, maybe I'm gonna have to change out the cap, but I'll probably have to leave that to another day. So I hope you're not expecting this to work entirely, okay? This is theoretical here. I'm hoping this is gonna work. If it doesn't, I'll be just as disappointed as you like in the last episode. So here's the sweet, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe 3. Let's hook her up and listen to what she sounds like before I do the modification. That is loud. That is very loud. I'm. That's just a little past two. Okay. Woo. So let's. I'm just. I just dialed it down so you guys could actually hear it without it clipping. So she is pretty effing loud. Let's swap out that resistor. Wow, there you go. That is the inside of the amplifier and it's exactly as I expected. According to the board layout on the service manual, it's R9 is exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, what I'm surprised though, I didn't actually know coax cable came this thin because I'm used to working with like 50 ohm uh, massive coax cable for antennas but I actually didn't know coax cable came this small and you can see there's a bunch of uh, coax cables going to the tubes and back and and uh, lots of isolation going on from the high high voltage tube area and uh, the lower voltage um, board components kind of shit Whew. okay now for the hard part Figuring out how to take out this board. I opened up the amp and now I'm ready to desolder, but let me show you what it looks like on the circuit board. There's the amplifier. It took quite a bit of elbow grease and work to take it out. You could see the knobs. I had to take out all the knobs on the front or the top panel. And then it was actually quite difficult to leverage this board out of its position and fold it over like this. Now, R9, I wrote it on the board so I wouldn't mess up which one it is, but I'm going to be desoldering this resistor right there. 
and I mentioned earlier that I was going to replace it with the 560k except I will not be doing that I will be taking an 820k resistor instead of this R9 right there so essentially um, right now the biggest value of the volume pot is at about half the voltage divider and if I swap this 270 with a 560 it's going to be about one third instead of one quarter I'm, I'm hoping on on uh, doubling up the volume so that instead of being at two my friend will be at four and have the same response so let's put in that 820k I just soldered that R9 resistor so let's turn it on test it out and see if the frequency response is good and see if I have effectively changed the scaling on that volume knob. I think I did it! That is less loud. I don't know by how much it's less loud, but it for sure is not as loud because right now I have it at two and you could actually listen to it without <coughs> without me seeing it clip on the screen over there. And then when I turn it up to four, which is what the new scaling should be, now th th that's when I could start seeing it clip on my screen. I'm all around satisfied with this, so I think I'm going to close it up, put on the screws, pack it up, put back on the knobs and everything and give it back to my friend. Hopefully he likes it. Right on. I hope you enjoyed today's episode about me swapping out a resistor and modifying this amplifier to make it just a tad less noisy. Um, Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I have a website at www.tinmanelectronics.com. Follow me on Twitter at Justin Tinman. That's engineering, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>